The Productivity Commission will release its final report into the workplace relations system today. Now it's expected that among the recommendations there'll be a call for an overhaul of penalty rates. Political reporter Matthew Doran joins us live now from our Parliament House Canberra studio. Matthew, afternoon to you. What changes to penalty rates have been mooted? Well, good afternoon to you, Scott. It was a draft report from the Productivity Commission back in August which let most of the detail out of the bag when it came to penalty rates. The key recommendation was to cut Sunday penalty rates down to the same level as Saturday penalty rates. Now, the key uh, driver behind this is a belief that that will help drive employment in areas like the hospitality and retail sectors who currently uh, some cafes, shops and the like uh, may be deterred from opening on Sundays because those penalty rates are so high. The draft report did, however, say that the Sunday penalty rate should be maintained for people such as nurses, paramedics and the like to uh, ensure that their, their conditions are, are still the same, but it was much, very much a driver for uh, small business and, the, and, uh, and the sectors like that that were behind uh, this. So the Prime Minister, not long after coming to the job, said that uh, there did seem to be some appetite for changing penalty rates, but did stress that any changes would rely on uh, full approval from workers and from, uh, from from the union movement. In regard to that, Matthew, what's likely to be the response of Labor and the unions to some of the key findings of this report? Well, we've already heard this morning from the unions and from Labor that they remain steadfastly opposed to any changes to penalty rates, seeing it as the beginning of a broader attack on workplace relations. The uh, shadow uh, employment minister, Brendan O'Connor, has been on radio this morning and he's said that, uh, that, the, that the coalition doesn't have a very good record when it comes to workplace relations and bringing forward measures. Uh, he says that, they, uh, that with work choices, they didn't give much warning that they were bringing in that failed legislation legislation and nor should they be trusted in this instance. Here's what he's had to say. This is an attack on the lowest paid workers in Australia, retail and tourist workers, uh, hospitality workers. The, these people do not receive large amounts of money uh, and as you've just heard this will be a big blow for the household budget for millions of Australians and let's not think that if the Liberal government uh, were to move on this they won't move on to public holidays, holidays, they won't move on to shift allowances, they won't move on cutting the minimum wage. And Matthew Doran in Canberra, Senior Australian and Indonesian Ministers are meeting today. What's been on the agenda? That's right. There's meetings happening in two cities and two countries. The Attorney General George Brandis and Justice Minister Michael Keenan are in Jakarta meeting with their Indonesian counterparts, while the Foreign Minister Julie Bishop and Defence Minister Maurice Payne are meeting the Indonesian Foreign and Defence Ministers in Sydney. Key to uh, their discussions is building the relationship between Australia and Indone Indonesia in terms of information sharing for terrorism and cyber security. And it comes in the wake of raids by Indonesian police on the island of Java over the last few days which have resulted in six arrests and has been the result of information sharing from the AFP. Uh, Julie Bishop spoke to the, uh, the media a short time ago and said that it really follows on from the meeting that Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull had with the Indonesian President Joko Widodo a short time ago and that our relations are strong. Prime Minister Turnbull has spoken uh, very positively about the um, warmth and the informality of the meeting with President Widodo and the focus on increasing our trade and economic and commercial ties has been very important. With my... And Matthew, finally, a senior government minister has sought to enlist some help in his battle for re-election. That's right. The Australian newspaper is reporting that the industry minister, Christopher Pine, has sent a series of text messages to a uh, morning radio show host in his home city of Adelaide asking for some help in trying to convince Nick Xenophon, the independent senator who's running candidates in his, uh, his party, the Nick Xenophon team, at the next federal election. He's asking for help to convince Nick Xenophon not to run a candidate against him in his seat of Sturt. Now, uh, there seems to be some concern that Nick Xenophon's popularity particularly in his home state of South Australia, could uh, unseat or at least challenge, give a very strong challenge to senior coalition members. It's been reported that, uh, that Christopher Pine said, among other things, that uh, he shouldn't run a candidate against me and please help me by convincing him to leave me alone. Now, Senator Xenophon has been on ABC News Radio this morning. He said, you know, tis the season for some interesting stories to be coming out. But he also said that, uh, that Christopher Pine has a much bigger war chest when it comes to 
to uh, battling the federal election and trying to retain his seat of cert. So uh, he shouldn't be all too concerned that, about uh, about how things will pan out, despite the fact that Nick Xenophon does believe his candidate is very strong. Matthew Doran in Canberra. Thanks very much.